story of Peyton Place. Starring Dorothy Malone as Constance McKenzie. Warner Anderson as Matthew Swain. Ed Nelson as Michael Rossi. And Mia Farrell as Allison McKenzie. he loves most, his wife, Julie, and his daughter, Betty. Come on, you got a minute, I got a minute. I'll take you up to the office and lay out the whole plan for you. Then, if you like, you buy. You don't like, you say, so long, George. Well, George, I've got about all the insurance I can carry now. Maybe next year. Next year. All right, I'll make a note on my calendar. Call Sam Hosmer, this time, next year. How's 10 o'clock in the morning next year? Is that a good time for you? Sorry, George, you've got to run. Rotten, Doc, what would you do? Give me another fist full of tranquilizers? Didn't they work? Well, I got some sleep last night, if that's what you mean. Good. Good? What's good about it? You go to bed rich, you wake up rich. You go to bed broke, you wake up broke. You said you were coming back to see me. Don't forget that, George. Don't count on it, Doc. Don't count on anything. your car. Aren't you open for business today? Well, there aren't a lot of patients dying to see Dr. Rossi. Have you ever had any New England fish chowder? Real New England fish chowder? No. Then come for dinner tonight, huh? So. something for you. No, thank you. Matthew Swain. Has he come back yet? It's a long ride down from the prison. I was going to say that Matthew Swain gave me that picture. Nice picture. Can I get you some coffee or something? Oh, no, thank you. I just dropped in, Constance. I thought I might send something to Elliot at Christmas, but he may be home by then. You think he will? We can't tell, can we? Oh, Mr. Carson. Do you mind if I sit down somewhere oh, for a moment? Uh, I'll call Dr. Rossi. No, no, that won't be necessary. I don't mean to inconvenience you. You're not. Thank you. Elliot used to like books. Hello, Mother. Is that good night, No. Uh, what's Mr. Carson doing here? Just sitting. Here? so lonely. Must be awful waiting. I'm going to talk to him. Allison. Hello, Mr. Carson. Hello, Allison. Um, this chair you're sitting on used to be on a ship. You should wear a coat. I do, some days. It's cold today. He'd make you wear a coat. Hmm? Your son, Elliot, when he comes home. I don't know that he's coming home. Oh, he will. I feel it. 
What was he like? A little like you. Like me? When he was young. When he was young. Mr. Carson, I'm... First chance I get, I'm gonna go to the top of Faraday's bluff and I'm gonna shout, Allison McKenzie, you are a hopeless, hopeless idiot. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have asked all those questions. Where were you asking? No, I thought I was only talking. Did I tell you anything? surgery, then thank you. I was just thinking how I'd feel if this had happened to Donald. Donald didn't make mistakes, nor make accusations. Dr. Rossi isn't accusing you. He's just asking questions. And I've given him answers. I must get back to the hospital. Uh, it's at the hospital that I miss Donald especially. Did you know that he and Bob Morton assisted me the last time I operated? No. Oh, I thought he might have told you. No, I don't think so. It was an emergency. We didn't get through until very early morning. What happened? When? During that operation. Oh, nothing special. Why? Joe, you called me. You suggested lunch. <laughs> Not to discuss some operation. Especially one that happened five years ago. Just before you switched to pathology. I'd like you to tell Rossi something for me. Of course. Suspensions don't last forever. One day the hospital may reinstate him. If he's sensible, it doesn't make too many enemies. I'll tell him, Joe. I can see you tomorrow. No, I'm just referring my surgical patients to Dr. I'm seeing the others. We have said 10. That'll be fine. Hello, Mike. Well, did you enjoy your lunch with Dr. Bradley? Simple enough deduction. The inn is on the square, and the square is under my window, and while looking out for a theoretical patient, I, I saw you. Michael. I appreciate your good intentions, Laura, but please don't try and fight my battles for me, if that's what you were trying to do. Dr. Bradley asked me to lunch to pump me for information. I thought it was a good chance to pump him. Unfortunately, we both had suspicious minds. Incidentally, he sent you a message. If you're sensible and don't go on making enemies, someday the hospital may see fit to Reinstate you. Was that his offer? Or Dr. Morton's? Well, don't tell me they're beginning to run scared. Well, there was something he said about Dr. Morton and Donald assisting him the last time he operated. And I realized that, that Donald had never spoken to me about it. Well, was he in a habit of discussing his operations with you? You know how it is with doctors' wives. I guess you don't. He used to come home and he'd tell me how things went, only this time he didn't. Well, maybe he just forgot about it. You know, it wasn't as if it happened yesterday. No, I remember I asked him about it and he changed the subject. You mean you 
think something may have gone wrong on the operating table. Well, I know the patient didn't die. I would have known that after the obituary in the paper. Michael. Michael, the patient didn't die. They were operating on Matt's way. Observer. Well, let's find out what the observer found worthy of observation. In pencil down at the bottom, just a few minutes. The observer hopes there'll soon be good news for Eli Carson. Sure that Peyton Place is ready to welcome Elliot Carson home in the same spirit as any other friend and neighbor. Hmm. Bitch. What was it like talking to him? Uncle Matt? You tell your mother I'll be in to see her a little later. All right, I'll tell him. Bye. Oh, Matt. Uh, just get in? Yes, just a minute. Uh, do you have a minute? What can I do for you? Well, I, I want to get some information. Do I have it? It's about Dr. Bradley. He, uh, he operated on you about five years ago. Yes, that's right. Uh, well, can you tell me something about it? Well, the operation was a success. And you had a normal recovery? Dr. Morton seemed satisfied. Morton? He took care of me afterward. Not Dr. Bradley? Look, there's no mystery about it. Dr. Bradley was taken ill. When I came out of the anesthesia, Dr. Morton had taken over. Well, then Dr. Bradley hadn't recovered sufficiently enough to supervise your post-operative care. Dr. Bradley was away for about a year. He had a prolonged illness, and I suspect it was tuberculosis like that, but I didn't ask. Look, Matt, I'm not prying for the fun of it. Michael, I don't know what you hope to get out of this, but it strikes me that Stirring things up is not the best way to get your hospital privileges back. You want me to be a good boy? I didn't say that. What did you say? Not you, Matt. Are you getting ready to tell me I don't belong in Peyton Place? George Anderson. Why is your post up? <laughs> Mustn't drink alone. Oh, come on in. Join the party, Miss Anderson. Okay, okay. Well, the cat's away, the mice will play. Am I a mouse, Julie? Taste it, Julie. <laughs> Let me tell you something funny. I said it was funny, so be sure you laugh. Most men drink to grow big. Not Big George. I drink to grow small. See me shrinking, Julie? Yeah? Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> let's, uh, let's put the bottle away, George. What's the matter? You afraid I'll disappear altogether? Well, wouldn't you mind that? Look, George, when we took this office, you made me a promise, right? Oh. Remind me. Building a business takes time. You said you wouldn't get impatient, hmm? <laughs> I'm not getting impatient. I've got pleasant surroundings, good company. You always were an interesting talker, Julie. No, it's the grocer, the butcher, the candlestick maker, the bank is getting impatient. Try your interesting talk on them, huh? Ah, forget it. Have a drink. Tomorrow's another day. Come on home, George. What's so different about being home? It's just you and me. Betty's not there. And while we're on the topic, let me tell you something. Mrs. Anderson, if you'd been on your toes, she wouldn't have had to marry Rod. You were there too, George. Yeah. Father of the year. Don't worry, George, we'll make it. You and me? You and me. <laughs> and what do you want with a guy who can't even drink himself tall? Who can't even dream himself tall? That's when we really get into trouble, Julie. 
And you can't even dream the big success. The big happy days, the big happy dream. <laughs> Give me the bottle, George. Come and take it. I can't take it. I can't take it much longer. Where are you going? Oh, I'm going out. You're going out or I'm getting out? She always leaves before the quitting whistle stops. Hello. No, this is Leslie Harrington. It's packed and ready to go. We're shipping it out tomorrow. Yes, I've checked. All right, I'll check it again. They never change. The brothers Gorman? You guessed it. You know, I almost answered the phone. I wish you'd come back, Julie. I uh, haven't heard from Betty today. How is she? You know the situation. Betty has what she wants. She has Rod. I'm not blaming you, Julie, but you can't blame me for blaming George. You shouldn't have left the mill. I blame George for that, too. You know what he thinks about us, Les. I'm married to him. I can't forget it. And I was married, Julie. Situations change. Perhaps I shouldn't have come. Julie. You're here now. Come on in. Seems I always turn to you, Les, when there's no one else. And always at the last moment. I'll do anything for you, Julie. It isn't for me. It's for George. You know the circumstances. That's where you take him back? Yeah. He's a good salesman. But he quit, Julie. And you know why he quit. Unless he's a beaten man. If something isn't done, I'm afraid for him. Please call him. Call him. Tell him you need him. Make him know somebody needs him. Can I count on you again, Les? Yes. To help you. Not George. Julie, come back as my secretary. Oh, I can't. You need the money. Let me help you. How about you? Catherine's will? Don't worry about that. Then it isn't true. She did leave you the stock. She did and she didn't. The will left it to me. Cartersell took it away. And you're still working for the Paytons? I'm going to fight that Carters. And if we lose? I don't lose. Come back, Julie. Help George. You ask a great deal. So do you, Les. Please call him. I don't understand you, Julie. After all George has done to me, to you, to my son, you still ask me to help him. Why? We all have to give him a chance. He's had chances. One last chance.
right here, George. Mm. I need some ice. You really want to drink, George? You really want to drink, George? Sure, I want to drink, George. Where have you been? Right here. Uh, sure you have, Julie. Sure you have. <laughs> Liar. Liar. It's late, George. You better come up to bed. Sit down. Come on in and sit down. All right. You lie, Julie. You know that, don't you? Don't you? Whatever you say, George. You weren't right here. I saw you. Did you know that? I, did you? I saw you. Oh? Who? Is that all you have to say? Just who? Hmm? You want to know where I saw you? Do you? Where? All right, I'll tell you. I saw you down at the mill. I saw you coming out of the mill, right? George. <laughs> where else would a man expect to find his wife except with Leslie Arrington, right? I did go to see Les, George. That's true. You went to see Les. Now, there's a statement. My wife went to see Les. I had to. I had to? Oh, that's nice. George. <laughs> you had to see Les. You had to go up to his office to see Les Harrington when everybody else had to go home. You really think a lot of me, don't you? Think of you? I think a lot about you. I think about you very much, but I don't think very much of you. Where are you going? You going back to see Leslie Harrington? You going back to your old lover boy? I'm going upstairs. You know what I'm going to do? Hmm? I'm going to teach you a lesson. Mm -hmm. You surprised? Well, you shouldn't be. A man who has a wife like you, there's only one thing to do. I can teach you a lesson, that's all. You turn Betty into a... <laughs> into a what? And then you run back to him. You run back to Les Harrington. So, oh, there's only one thing I can do, right? There's only one thing left to do, right? Right? the continuing story of Peyton Place. How did it happen? He was drunk. He's been drunk before. Not like this. I was afraid he was going to kill me. I'd like you to leave the laboratory. I've got work to do. Now, you listen to me. I'm fighting for my professional life. Do you understand that? Do you think I'm going to take this line down? Mother, are you in love with Dr. Rossi? Why do you ask? It's a natural question. 